Hello, I'm Tim Peacock, a volunteer at Pendon Museum, and I'm introducing the latest episode of Views of the Vale, the museum's exploration of the villages and buildings modelled at Pendon. As has been the custom throughout the series, we are starting where we will also be finishing, in this case, outside the Harrow Inn in the village of Wombra. You may have noticed that it is not the first time we have started and finished at a pub. In this episode, we are visiting two villages, Badbury and Wombra, and these villages have buildings that are the heart of Pendon's Vale project. In Babri, where we start, are a group of cottages that are the basis for the group of models known as the Chapel Group, which is regarded by many as Pendon founder Roy England's personal modelling tour de force. And in Wombra, there is the building that inspired the whole enterprise, modelled at Pendon as the Wagon and Horses pub. Badbury is a hamlet in the parish of Chiseldon, about two miles south of Swindon. It's an ancient settlement with records of a manor of Badbury being granted by the King to the Abbot of Glastonbury Abbey in Somerset in the year 955. Historically it was an agricultural settlement, but in recent years the links with farming have diminished. Only one of the three farms that existed in the 1930s continues to have any agricultural use today. Badbury is now predominantly residential, with around 30 homes stretching along the road between Liddington in the east towards Chiseldon in the west. Prior to becoming a public house, the Baker's Arms was the village bakery. The building dates from before 1841 and is constructed of sarsen stones, brick and chalk stone with a slate roof. Until 1885 it was run by the Horton family as both a baker's and a beer house. Beer houses differed from public houses in that they could only sell beer and only for on-site consumption. They had less strict regulation than public houses and weren't normally subject to the supervision of local magistrates. This changed in 1869 when they became subject to the same regulations as public houses. In the case of the Baker's Arms, these legal matters had special relevance. At some point, the landlord had been imprisoned for assaulting a 14-year-old domestic servant. His wife's subsequent application for a licence to sell spirits, made to the same magistrate who had jailed her husband, was rejected. Although the Baker's Arms had by then been a beer house for well over a century, it wasn't granted a full licence until 1960. From the gallery at Pendon, visitors can only see the back of the Baker's Arms, but the hidden front of the model is just as detailed as the part that visitors can see. Three of the pubs in the Vale scene have links with Arkell's Brewery. The Carpenter's Arms in South Marston and the Baker's Arms in Badbury are both owned by the company today. In earlier times, in the 1860s, Arkell's also supplied beer to the Harrow Inn in Wombra, where this episode will end. Arkell's Brewery was established in Swindon by John Arkell in 1843, and has been owned by members of the Arkell family since that time. It's Swindon's oldest company, built on the massive expansion of the town following the arrival of the railways and the decision to site the Great Western Railway works there. An example of a Swindon pub from those days is the Dolphin Hotel. Historically, this was popular with the railway's employees as it was situated just outside the factory gates. Special licences were issued permitting early opening on certain days, so, for example, the Dolphin could serve railway workers and their families early in the morning prior to their departure on the company holiday, known as the Trip. Farming activities associated with Babbury Farmhouse ceased in the 1950s, and the farmland was separated from the house and sold. The farmyard was retained and the farmhouse remodelled. The stable was converted to a garage and all other structures within the farmyard were demolished and became lawned terraces. Badbury Farm is a significant feature of Pendon's Vale scene and, as in real life, the model has been set adjacent to the Baker's Arms. The model shows the farm as it was in the 1930s, with a wide array of buildings including a granary, barn, stable and various sheds and stores. As illustrated by the model, the farmhouse walls are part chalkstone and part limestone, with a variety of thatch, tile and slate roofs. Along Berricot Lane, about 50 yards south of Babbury Farmhouse, are a number of cottages that at Pendon form what is called the Chapel Group. 
This takes its name from the small primitive Methodist chapel that was once almost enclosed by the cottages, but has since been demolished. At the northern end of the row was a cottage called High Thatch that is now demolished. In the Pendon period this was a thatched stone building with a derelict stable. When visited by the Pendon team in the early 1950s, it had an indoor water well 80 feet deep and gas lighting in the living room. The chalkstone chimney was in such poor condition that, when High Thatch was demolished in 1953, the end wall of the adjoining Sarson Cottage had to be rebuilt. Sarson Cottage is constructed of washed stone with a new brick front wall. Originally this was two cottages, the right-hand one being a general store and butcher's shop. In the 1940s this shop, known as Badbury Stores, also operated as a bed and breakfast. The sign on the front announced the cyclist's rest, reflecting the growing popularity of cycling as a pastime in the 1930s. At that time cycles far outnumbered cars and it was the cyclists who lobbied government to provide smoother road surfaces. At Pendon, the cottage is called Middlecott. White Cottage has been considerably refurbished and partly rebuilt after a chimney fire. Unusually, it had a slate roof in the 1930s, as in the Pendon model, but that has now been replaced with thatch to be more in keeping with other cottages in the village. A track next to White Cottage leads to Liddington Cottage, and this arrangement is reproduced in the Pendon model. The cyclist making notes outside the cottage is Roy England. The figure was produced by Californian sculptor Helen Buckland to mark Roy's 80th birthday. The track to Liddington Cottage passes the site of the demolished Primitive Methodist Chapel that was still standing in the 1930s and can be seen in Pendon's model of the chapel group. Primitive Methodism was a working class movement founded in 1820 that joined other Methodists to form the present Methodist Church in 1932. It's widely regarded as having been one of the forebears of the Labour Party, trade unions and the cooperative movement. In many ways it isn't surprising to find such a chapel in Badbury since the Primitive Methodists focused their mission on the rural poor. A little further up the track from the site of the chapel is a small thatched chalkstone building called Liddington Cottage. In the 1970s a conservatory was added, modern windows installed and the stonework rendered, but it remains thatched. Modelled at Pendon as Little Chapel Cottage, the model has been turned through 90 degrees to provide a better view for visitors. The horseshoe that can be seen on the lean-to shed is made of thread, a nice example of the modeller's ingenuity. From outside Liddington Cottage there is a good view of Liddington Castle. This early Iron Age hill fort stands at an elevation of about 900 feet, making it the highest point in the vicinity of Swindon. Liddington Castle is the prototype for Penn Tor in the Vale scene at the museum. It's believed to be one of the earliest hill forts in Britain. The earthworks would have originally consisted of a relatively simple oval bank of timber and earth fronted by a ditch, with causewayed entrances on the east and west sides. A palisade of wooden posts may have lined the top of the bank. During a later phase, the ditch was enlarged and the chalk excavated from it dumped on the bank, thereby increasing both the height of the ramparts and the width of the ditch. Excavation of the hill forts along the ridgeway has revealed a wide variety of purposes, including ceremonial use, burial, sheep management, markets and seasonal meeting places. Wombra, a large village with just over 2,000 inhabitants, has two distinct parts, Upper and Lower Wombra. When Roy England moved to Upper Wombra in 1925, he lived in this vicarage, close to several buildings that were undergoing modernisation. He thought that the works were detrimental to the appearance of the buildings and to the environment of the community as a whole. The irreversible changes that were underway energised Roy to begin a detailed survey of vernacular buildings in the Vale of White Horse, with the intention of making models of them. This work ultimately led to the founding of Pendon Museum. The story of Fowler's shop graphically illustrates the role that Pendon plays in preserving the past for future generations. 
Seen here in August 2020, this derelict 15th century building was a grocer's shop in the Pendant period, but was scheduled for demolition. Less than a month later, the building was reduced to rubble. The building had once been a rope maker's workshop, using locally grown hemp, but this business closed in the mid-19th century when rope making became an industrial process. The original rope walk, which extended the full length of the ground floor, survived as a passage from front to back of the building throughout its various uses. In the 1850s, the building became the Ship Inn, and by 1877 it was owned and run by Wombra Brewery, which was situated adjacent to the Harrow Inn in Lower Wombra. The Ship Inn closed in 1907, and a few years later the building became a village shop and was in the hands of licensed grocer Evan Fowler, the name used for Pendon's model. In 1926 the thatched roof was replaced with red asbestos slates and the outside walls were coated with rough cast cement. The appearance of the building was thereby comprehensively altered, but Pendon's model records its former state. The shop is now being replaced with a new house, and the barn will be converted into garaging. About a hundred yards from Fowler's shop is number one Ham Road. This building was the prototype for the Wagon and Horses public house at Pendon. What is now a modest cottage was built in the 17th century of local stone under a thatched roof. With its outbuildings it was a fairly substantial property and was to become a fully licensed inn called the Cali Arms. Today, facing it across the road, is its replacement, the new Cali Arms, which opened in 1847. There is some evidence that Number 1 Ham Road continued as a beer house into the 1850s after the new Cali Arms opened. In 1931, by which time it was a dwelling, the owners replaced the thatch with pink asbestos tiles and the row of outbuildings was demolished. Roy England recorded this in his notes. It was a simple cottage, partly of stone, partly of brick, under shading thatch. The successive layers of wash, pale cream, rich cream, an almost undefinable hint of duck egg blue, fawn, buff and peach, were peeling off one by one, like the bark of a plane tree, leaving the old walls in a mellow fantasy of indescribably lovely hues. But all this was ripped off. The graceful ups and downs of the thatched eaves were levelled to a hard straight line with an iron gutter. The sloping ends of the roof were built out square and prosaic. The Wagon and Horses was the first model built for the Vale scene and was a learning experience both for surveying and research methods and for modelling techniques. The model was built in HO scale at 3.5mm to the foot, the only model at this scale in the Vale scene. By the early 1940s, railway modellers in the UK had mainly adopted the 4mm to the foot scale, to which all other Vale models have been constructed. Lower Wombra is one of the few settlements in northeast Wiltshire that is of Anglo Saxon origin. Building materials were probably sourced from the ruins of the Roman town Duro Cornovium, which was located nearby at Nithe Farm. The High Street is part of Ermine Way, the Roman road that once linked Gloucester to Silchester. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Lower Wombra was a popular resting place for cattle drovers on their way to London, often with 800 head of cattle passing through the village in a week. A number of hostelries, including the Harrow Inn, were established to cater for this trade. The Harrow Inn is on the east side of the High Street. Thought to be the oldest public house in the village, it dates back to at least 1740 and was built as a coaching inn known as the Harrow and King's Head. Coaching inns became common in Britain from the mid-17th century and were typically located at roughly seven-mile intervals across the country, depending on local terrain. They provided ale, food, a change of horses and overnight lodgings for travellers. The inn is built from brick and rendered stone. The end of the building near the road was modernised around 1930, but the inn still retains many of its original features, including the thatched roof. In the grounds, the old forge has been converted into three letting rooms. A small detail of the pendant model, easy to overlook, is an exquisite tandem bicycle leaning against a fence outside the pub. 
If you look very closely, you can see a perfect set of wheel spokes and other details. The model is of a 1936 Grubb Pullman tandem and was built for Pendon in Perth, Australia by Adrian Duhome. We are at the end of this episode of Views of the Vale, in which we have taken you to the prototypes for some iconic buildings modelled in Pendon's Vale scene, and explained relevant aspects of rural life as it was in the period around 1930. We hope that we have whetted your appetite for more. This could be in the real Vale, where you might take one of the walks described on our website. We hope you have enjoyed this short video. We have a lot more from Pendon to share with you, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel, which we update regularly.